praise the name of the Lord. We thank God for the rendition of the choir. May the Lord continually increase them in Jesus' name. Shall we just pray to get started? Jesus is Alpha, Alpha and Omega, Jesus, Jesus is Alpha, Alpha and Omega, so I praise Him for you, Alpha, Alpha and Omega, so I praise Him for you, Alpha. Alpha and Omega, like Him I want to be, to live in holiness, like Him I want to be, to live in Fubiani, Jesus is Alpha, Alpha and Omega. So I praise him for it, Alpha, Alpha, no Omega. So I praise him for it, Alpha, Alpha, no Omega. We want to appreciate you, Alpha, Omega, the one that began the beginning, the unchangeable changer, the king of glory, the ever faithful God, the husband man, the one who has no beginning, no middle, and we have no ending. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for the blessings that you have given to us, even on this platform of Deacon D. We want to appreciate you for great testimonies, and very many questions that drive us back to the Bible. We want to say thank you. Lord Almighty, we ask that as your work proceeded out today, let the miracle of God be delivered. Let the hand of God be mighty. Lord, I pray that this young man will disappear and only spirit will appear. Lord, we, I, I, I empty myself from anything that may stand against your word. That even me, by the time you are using my mouth to speak, I will hear it. And your word will bring salvation, healing, comfort, and deliverance. And Lord, everyone who have uh, put down their prayer request to this platform, please answer them. And Lord, in your word today, keep us to be mighty, mighty instrument in the hand of the Lord. And we pray that the placement and the investment of heaven upon us will not be in vain. Amen. Lord, we will, yield, we will yield fruit that is that God can be proud of. Thank you, eternal Father. Lord, we remember our Father in the Lord that has given us this platform. Let your glory find expression more and more in his life. And Lord, grant him radiant health. And everyone say amen for him. Get double of that prayer request. Amen. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to once again appreciate a daddy in the Lord, my own daddy in the Lord, for the privilege to stand on this platform from time to time to be able to take out of what he has delivered to us as uh, his apprentice, for others. May the Lord continually bless him in Jesus' name. Today we are going to look at what we title the redemption of fruitless vine. The redemption of fruitless vine. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. Luke 13, 6 to 9. He also spoke this parable. A certain man has a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought food on it. And found none. And he said to the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on, the fig, on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does he encumbrance the ground? And answering, he said to him, Lord, 
Let it alone this year also until I dig around it and throw manure. If it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, ye shall cut it down. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Loaded passage. When we genuinely repent and begin living for God, the fruits in our life will soon be evidence to all that pass by, those who are aware of our life before. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man therefore is in Christ, a new creature, all things are passed away. In, my, in the book of John chapter 1, verse 12, John 1, 12, he said, as many as believe him, he gave them power to be fruitful. He gave them power to become like God himself. And likewise, a failure to repent and live for God we saw a lack of fruit as the evidence. We could read in the book of Romans chapter 1, Romans 1 verse 28 specifically says, because they failed to retain God in their knowledge. Romans 1 28, he turned, he turned them over to reprobate mind. So the presence and or the absence of fruit in our lives or in the life of those people who claim to be God's people is an important issue in God's words. For example, in Matthew 3, 8, Matthew 3, 8, he said, bring forth fruit in keeping with repentance. That's John the Baptist said that. In the book of John chapter 15, verse 5, John 15, 5, Jesus himself said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he, bear, he bears much fruit. In John 15, 8, John 15, 8, Jesus is still speaking there. He said, by this is my father glorified that you bear much fruits. But there is something that is very strong in Matthew 3.10. Matthew 3.10. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into fire. So, when you compare the text of today and these few passages I've read, fruit, real and visible spiritual fruit is a necessity. And it should be a necessary concern for anyone who loves God and desire to go to heaven. We shall look at the parable of this fruited vine or a barren fig tree um, in, diff in three different ways. Because in the days of Jesus, this was a parable about the Jews' nation, but also contains some important lessons for us today. So the biblical issue of fruit bearing and the principle he put forth is applicable to the church. And that concerns you and me. Three aspects we want to consider in this digging deep. We are going to do a general survey of this parable. That will be subtopic one. And we will look at the hindrances uh, to fruitlessness of the vine. And the last, lastly, we are going to look at the tips for redemption of vine to fruitfulness. General survey of the parable, hindrances to fruit, I mean fruitfulness of the vine, and the tips for redemption of the vine to fruitfulness. What is the general survey? There are things we need to look, to look at, it, at, at that particular passage. Number one, in verse 6, the verse says, a certain man has a fig tree. So number one thing we need to consider is a personal asset. Personal asset. There are actually two men mentioned in that particular passage in this parable. The owner of the vineyard, he says, he planted the tree in, the tree in his vineyard. And the vineyard keeper, who was probably an employee of the owner, in charge of doing actual work. 
So, cutting down the fig tree was a drastic action. But it was well within the rights of the owner. It was his vineyard. It was his tree. He could do what he pleased with it. We are also like a tree planted in the vineyard of God. Suppose you decided to paint your house a color that you choose. And somebody else came outside and said, no, 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 no. That color, I don't like it. Paint it, this my color. Will you just throw in and said, well, paint the house in the color he likes? No. You will, you will, you will refuse. Why? Because it's your house, not his own house. So, is you are the owner of your house, the owner. Owner carry the rights of ownership to determine. The right ownership carries the right of determination. Likewise, since God owns this world and everything that is in it, as, that is in it, He owns each of us. We are His, and so it is a simple right for Him to deal with us the way He wants. And <laughs> do you know what we do today? We try and behave as if we have no owner. He has every right to expect anything he chooses in our lives. He's the owner. Paul asked in Romans chapter 9, verse 20 to 21. Romans chapter 9, verse 20 to 21. Who are you, O man, that talk back to God? Shall what is form say to him who is form? Why did you make me like this? That's from the NIV. We live in a day today why, where people talk back to God. All the time, they are forgotten that there is creation and it can do what it wants with our life. Most especially those of us who are born again. You are planted in the vineyard of the Lord. So the sign that a gardener or a vine dresser has been there is very, very clear. Very, very obvious. The vine has tender, has been tender. It has been pruned, cleansed, and tied to the arbor. So, the season of uh, care should be followed by the season of harvest. But the, the, this man didn't, did, didn't get the, the fruit expected. But remember, he is his personal asset. And God is your legal owner. He's my legal owner. Not like a story of a woman that I had. Woman in his... Um, uh, early sixties, she went to the grocery and she parked her car in the garage. When she finished shopping, she came out and she found four people in the car. And she threw down that thing she was holding, took the purse and removed the gun and pointed the gun on those. If you, he said to those four men in the car, if you don't get out of the car now. I shoot, I kill all of you. And the people ran away in terror. So when the woman go, got herself together, carried the grocery, put it in the, in the car, he got to the nation. She tried to put the key. The thing didn't enter. She tried. She now looked and said, ah, this doesn't look like my car. She suddenly realized that she has become part of the nation's crime of car hijackers. And so, she, <laughs> she closed the door of the car, get into her own car, and off she drove to the police station and report herself and said, please, I made this mistake. And the policeman on the desk was laughing. And he said, why are you laughing? He said, look, the other desk. Four men just ran, they are making report that a woman in her early 60s just uh, just hijacked their car. So the woman just pleaded with those people and they didn't put any charge on this particular woman. But God is our legal owner. He, can, we, he cannot mistake his own property. He cannot. When you check the book of 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, because he's our legal owner, 
Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom ye have from God, and that ye are not your own? God has the right to tell us what he wants from us. And from this parable, God expects you and me to produce fruits for him. I just want you to remember that such an expectation is well within the realm and the right of the one that owns you and me. Personal asset. Number two, advantage location. Advantage location. Vasi said, a fig tree which has been planted in the vineyard. The fig tree enjoys certain advantage not possessed by other fig trees. Many fig trees along the roadside. I mean, they were in essence wild fig tree. No one fertilized them. No one cared for those one. They survive on rockery. They in the shallow and spear nutrient. But for this one, is worth taking care of. Enjoy good soil. Keepers are there to watch, and there is a nourishment. Now, God has put the chosen people in favored position. He lavished special care on you and me. He has taken special pain with us. He sent prophets to put regular vitalization of his word into our life. He sent apostles. He sent pastors, teachers, and administrators. Doesn't it seem obvious that he will expect a return on his investment? Yet, all, with all this advantage that we have, well, we turn out many turn out not to eat, to have fruit. He did not find fruit there in, 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 the, in the life of those people that have favor. What about us? What about us? God has lavished everything upon us. The word of God is in abundance today. You are prophet. You have all of them. We have, we have CD. We have cassette. We have radio program. We have television program. We have computer, computer around us. We are indeed a plant. We are planted in a privileged place. Yet, are we producing appropriate fruit? Doesn't it follow that the owner of the vineyard invests so much in us? There should be much fruit. Personal assets, advantage location. Number three, anticipated production. Anticipated production. Now, what is the expectation of the owner of the vineyard? In verse six, he came looking for fruit. He came looking for fruit. A fig tree in this parable has leaves. Cannot survive, a fig tree cannot survive without leaf, but it has no fruit after three years. Three years. Israel was a, a religion people, it has a lot of leaves. In fact, they will be hard pressed to find more religion nations anywhere in the world than the nation of Israel in the time of Christ. Religion was their heartbeat. I mean, our attendance to church services in Jerusalem was expected if not required. People regularly died for their nation and their religion. Yet, this parable is prefigured. They had no fruits, so they were cut down. Do you know the difference between leaves and fruit today? All religion and all people who are going to church, all these things are taking place in our country. Where is the influence of this in our culture. Where is the where are the changed lives? Why is it that honesty and honor are in short supply? Nations that is known to be religion. Where you find people, I mean, where do we find people of integrity? We often bemoan the, uh, the direction of nation is going that they are going away from God. We blame the politician. We blame the political party. We blame the unbeliever for controlling the media. Yet, none of these things could even begin to have influence if we are following Christ and we are bearing fruit. May I say to you, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, 
God is looking for fruit in our life. He is not talking about lists of crying. Lord, Lord, that we do this. Live for mere sitting in church building and dance to music. No. He wants fruits in our life, according to the passage. He will cut down and remove those who didn't bear fruit. May you not be cut down in the name of Jesus. Number one, personal asset. Number two, advantage, location. Number three, anticipated production. Number four, grievance against fruitless vine. Verse seven. Grievance against fruitless vine. He says, behold, these three years, I have come looking for fruit on this thing without finding any. There is an intimate intimation here. Here is God for bearers, for his people who have been planted in the vineyard. There should have been fruit for three years, but nothing. There is a dissatisfaction, disappointment each year. And but <laughs> he said, I will cut this down. Why? The owner is giving every reasonable opportunity for production of fruit. He doesn't want to destroy the tree. He, I mean, this God that we serve has pierced us. He has given us all things for godliness. He, he surrounded us with something that will help us to bear fruit. But let's bear this in mind that the grace of God can expire if you if you don't, don't care about it, and if you didn't find any, I am afraid, and I pray, we will not be cut down in the name of Jesus. You and I should bear fruit so that we will not be removed. He said, I did not find any. So, personal asset, advantage, location, anticipated production, grievance against fruitless vine, and number five, the verdict against fruitless vine. Verdict. He said, and this part of the parable is very simple to understand. Look at what he said in verse 7. Cut it down. Why does he even use up the ground? What is terrifying thought on to imagine God saying that to one of us? Cut it down. It isn't even worth the space that it takes on the ground. It is quite very easy for us living in the age of grace to be deceived into a false sense of security, thinking that such a thing will never happen. But the patience of God should never be confused with the largeness of his path. It's not, God is not a laxity person. Paul wrote to Romans Christian, Romans Christian, when he was uh, talking to them, or do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads to repentance? If any of us live a fruitless life since being baptized and seems no, I mean, we don't feel remorse about it. Don't let us abuse the grace of God beside producing fruits in a life is a process. It isn't something you do for one or two days, for one week or two weeks. It's a lifetime. You bear, you continually bear fruit. And the same thing you need to do spiritually. So, you, we need to bear fruit for him. We are personal asset of God. We are in the advantage location. There is an anticipated production that we need to do. Then he has grievance against fruitless vine. His verdict. Let me just mention too before I jump to other things. The supplication for patience. Supplication for patience. Notice that the vine yard keeper. And I like intercede for the tree. And intercede a step in between the two parties. Just to reach an agreement or to give one of them another chance. In verse 8 and 9, verse 8 and 9 tells us, Luke chapter 13, verse 8 and 9 tells us, 
The vineyard keeper said, let it alone, sir. For this year too, until I dig around it and put fertilizer. And if it bear fruit, next year, fine. If not, cut it down. What a beautiful prefigure of Jesus' ministry among the Jews. But may I say to you that it's true of us today. Listen to the word of Jesus in Matthew 23 and Luke 13. Matthew 23 and, and uh, Luke 13. When he was talking about, about his people, he said, Oh Jerusalem, oh Jerusalem, who killed the prophet? And stone those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather you as children together the way as hen gather her cheek under her wing. But you are unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. In our parable that we are examining today, it is the fig tree that is cut down. But who were the interceder in this case? They were prophets of God, sent to ultimate plead for them. Then the prophet, Jesus Christ himself. Again, this is an history. We are not doing history lesson, but we are bringing it into our life. This passage has meaning for us today. Christ has interceded for us and continue to do so as I speak. But intercession is not so that we can continue to do nothing about God's expectation. And number seven, deferred judgment. Notice the element of warning. Warning to us. The hand at the end of, of, nine, of, the, of verse 9. He says, if not, cut it down. As a history lesson that if not was fulfilled for Israel because they failed to utilize the extension of time God gave them. But what about us today? What about you and me today? Will you utilize the extension of the grace of God? When will you stop sinning? When will you get closer to God? When will you start bearing fruit? All this support that you have from God, they are for you to bear fruit. They are for me to bear fruit. Seventh thing I've mentioned before I jump to the other thing. The personal asset of the owner, advantage location of the fig, anticipated production from the owner, the grievance against the fruitless vine, that's number four. Number five, the verdict against fruitless vine. And number six, the supplication for patient and the deferred judgment. Let me quickly mention four things. Hindrances to fruitfulness of the vine. Hindrances to fruitfulness of the vine. Now, combining the account of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we can identify four things, four factors responsible to fruitless vine. Now, number one is care of life. Care, cares of life. And Matthew 13, verse 22, he also that has received among the tongue, he is the one that heareth the word, and the care of this word, and the stiff, deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and become unfruitful. Now, what do we mean by that? The care of life refers to things in this world that Christians become obsessed and preoccupied with. The care of this world, about a wide range of things, career, education, educational pursuit, ambitions, responsibility, duties, and other material things. In the world that we live today, we are success is measured by money and other material things. Christians are tempted to follow a 21st century that cares about all these things. They are likely going to abandon the major thing. Christians should not be obsessed pursuing material things. Because the Bible said in Matthew 6, 33, Matthew 6, 33, seek it first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added. Number two, his deceitfulness of riches. I'm talking about hindrance or hindrances. Deceitfulness of riches. Mark 4, 19. Mark 4, 19. And the cares of this world 
and the deceitfulness of riches and the loss of other things entering in and choke the world and they become unfruitful. What do we mean by this? Deceitfulness of riches refer to people's heart that are deceived by quest for riches. Deceitfulness of riches encompasses the shady means people become so rich as a corruption, prostitution, bribery, murder. I mean, deceitfulness of, is of, 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 of riches encompasses pride, arrogance, extravagant living, the excess, the an, an excesses that characterize the life of worldly rich person. It's worth mentioning that many Christians have been deceived today. They have lost their value. So that they started stealing and cheating. And some of those who are already rich, Christian way, they have entangled themselves with something that is not that is not of God. I mean, and because they failed to bear good fruit, <laughs> they, they became something else. Number three, hindrance. The loss of other things. The loss. The loss of other things. Look at what he said in that the loss of other things. Mark 4.19. Mark 4.19. He said, And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the loss of other things entering in, and choked the world, and they became unfruitful. So what is he saying? The loss of other things. Means in Greek, in Greek word, epi, uh, epitumia, which means longing, having a desire, especially for the what is forbidden. Epitumia. Now, the laws of other things. The phrase in that particular Mark, Mark 9 14 could refer to secular entertainments, fame, riches, pleasure, sexual pleasure, which has become most part of a carnal nature. Of unbelievers today. I mean, you see something and, and you are amazed. You are amazed. Alcohol, porn, illicit sex, money, hooliganism. You, you are, and Christ, some Christian brother has smuggled themselves into this and they appear in church and look so sanctimonious and holy. Loss of other things. Christian, if, who is a fruit fine, must never get a tango. And you want, you want to be a fruit? Don't get a tango. And number four, the pleasure of this life. The pleasure of this life. I'm talking about something that could hinder us from bearing fruit. Luke 8, 14. Luke 8, 14. And, and that which fall among thorns are they which when they have had the word go forth and they are choked with the cares and riches and pleasure of this life and bring no fruits to performance. So what is he saying? What is that saying to us? He's saying simple things, simple activity, simple act which include drug abuse, alcoholism, promiscuity, tongue, secular music. You know, today I have some Christian. They will say, no, 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 no. There's no problem with that. Carnal pleasure. Carnal pleasure. And these factors are cares of life, deceitfulness of riches, loss of other things, and pleasures of life will rather lead Christians to an error, will lead them to become a victim as a fruitless vine. Hatred will, will become the order of the day. Greed, covetousness, lasciviousness. But that is not the type of fruit God wants us to bear. How do I bear fruit? That's the redemption of the vine, the redemption of the vine to fruitfulness. Five things. I will call them quickly. Tips for the redemption of vine to fruitfulness. Number one, place them. Place your hand direct in the hand of God. Your life direct in the hand of God. When a plant gets light, then they will grow. Get the light of God's word. Let it grow. Psalm 27 verse 1, I like it. Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. 
Of whom shall I be afraid? In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 24. Acts 20, 24. But none of these things move me, neither can't I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and ministry, which I have received from the Lord to testify the gospel of grace. Place your life in his hand. Number two, make sure, make sure that you are bold, abide in him. Make him your abode. Make sure you have shelter from high winds. The Bible said you need to dwell safe in safe place. In Psalm 27 verse 4. Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing have I desire of the Lord that I will speak, I will seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. In Psalm 91 verse 1. Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwell. Make him your abode. Number three. Hard compost or manure to the soil of your life. Get spiritual fertilizer to your life to be able to bear fruit. Spiritual fertilizer. Pray that your life will open to change. To change. Psalm 34 verse 5 said they looked to him, they were lighted. Psalm 34 verse 5 and their faces were not as ashamed. James 5 and 11 said, Behold, we count them happy which endure. We count them happy. And number four, Get support. Get support from the Lord. Let God take care. Let God take care. Lean upon God. Psalm 55, Psalm 22. I mean, Psalm 55, verse 22. Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer thee. The righteous to be moved. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. And number five. Number five. Let the master prune you. Master should prune your life. Let God shape you. Even when it hurts. John 15 2. John 15 2. He cut off every branch in me that bear no fruit. Why every branch that, that does bear fruit? He prunes. So that it will bring more fruit. Hebrews 12, 7. Hebrews 12, 7. If ye endure chastity, God dealeth with you as with his son. Let God water you into delicious entity. Then the world will take a, a bite. And they will fight to know more of your God. And you, because your fruit is good. And you will lead other people to bear fruit. Let me conclude. We need to take a stock of our lives. We are all in the probationary period of the 40 year, you and me. Christ, the vineyard keeper, has made intercession for us. It's our senior advocate. He did, he did not do that to grant us more time to do nothing for God. He expects us to use the time we have remaining to produce fruit in our life. The fruitless vine will be cut off and cast into fire. May that not be your portion. You have pledged your allegiance to Christ so that you will bear fruit to him, so that you will follow him. Bear fruit for him. My life, my life doesn't depend on your own fruit. Your life doesn't depend on my own fruit. This digging deep comes straight from God to you and me to bring forth fruit keeping with repentance. May God bless you as we bring fruit. If you are there, you are not born again. You haven't started at all. Remember that there is a general thing God expects from you and there are hindrances you need to avoid and there are ways you need to bear fruit for, for your master. Wherever you are, if you have not been born again, tell the Lord, please save me. And if you are born again, you are sitting. How can you be in a church for three, four, five years and you are not doing anything? You are not bearing fruit. Evangelism, you are not there. DJ, you are not there. Midway service, you are not there. You are so busy. After the end, what will you do? Bow your head with me. I'm about to pray. If you want to be born again, just tell the Lord, Lord, I am here. If you are born again, ask the Lord, empower me to bear fruit. I'm going to pray with you. 
Father, thank you for the people who are confessing their sin. May you forgive them and write their name in the book of life. I pray that from today, everything that corrupt their lives will remove. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse them. The senior advocate of heaven, Jesus, as he's pleading their cause, may their head receive that answer. And every believer and all believers that have not been bearing fruit, I pray as from today, may they have a change of heart. May they be stirred up to bear fruit. And Lord, that when you come for us, you will not say cut it down that will be able to reign eternally with you. Thank you, our maker. We worship you for hearing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now, please make sure that you um, let us know if you have given your life. If there is any way we can help you further, your question, please watch your set and write your question, your prayer request, and we'll pass everything to our Father and the Lord. The Lord will bless you. Let's take our offering your service is not complete until you give offering. I pray on it and send it and look on the board and be sure that you give. What you give, you receive. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for all the people who are lifting up something. Bless their offering. Use it for your glory. And Lord Almighty, they will not lose their reward here. And in the kingdom to come, they will, make, will all make it there. And when they roll call up in, one, in heaven, none of us will be put to shame. Thank you, eternal Father. We bless your name. I take time to pray for all the people who are supporting those media. May your glory never go down. May you continue to prosper. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us. For prayers and counseling, please reach out to us via the number showing on your screen. And to give your tithe and offering, please check out for our account details showing on your screen. And to get more information about our CCG, please follow us on all our social media platforms and on our website, www.rccg.org. Thank you very much for joining us. Do have a great day.